Hey, how you doing? Steve here from MRAs.com. Today I'm going to have a look at FGX, a new mastering plugin from Slate Digital. Traditionally use compression and limiting when you're mastering, plus a couple of other little tricks to get volume into your tracks. But one of the downsides of using a brick wall limiter is if you're hitting it hard, you can kill your snare and your kick drum. So the guys in Slate Digital have created something called Intelligent Transient Preservation. Now what that does is it's adding saturation to your transient, so saturation to your kick drum and your snare most of the time. So it tries to help keep the snap and the, the boom of your kick drum even in a busy and loud rock mix. So let's have a look at the different sections here. We've got our compressor, we've got the level, and then we've got a pretty comprehensive metering section here as well. Now I'm just going to knock off the power of the level section, just set these down to zero. The metering section we can leave on, and the compressor. Let's bring this down to zero as well. And the first thing to mention are the settings. In here we've got control over pretty much every parameter of your compressor. Uh, Race your range, for example, between 1 to 5, 1 to 10, or 1 to 20. I think actually we'll set this to 1 to 10 for this little experiment. Click Save. Now the guys in Slate Digital say this is one of the most transparent compressors on the market. So let's just test it out and see if we can hear it working. We'll set the ratio to uh, 3 for the moment. I'll set a little harder in a minute. Um, and let's bring up the threshold. Actually what I'll do is I'll move on to a, a different part of the song. Just before the chorus kicks in here there's a vocal by itself. Okay. Let's set the threshold just uh, there for the moment. Well, there you go, straight away we've got what, minus 2 dBs of gain and it is very transparent, there's no doubt. When the vocal is uh, is finished here and the, everything kicks in, it still kicks in, it doesn't kill it. Let's set it a little harder with the same, same ratio for the moment, we'll bring up the threshold. Same place again. Okay, you can hear a slight little pull on that, but it's still very good, this, can't argue. Okay, let's set the um, the knee up to about 10 there. I'll bring this back a bit. Same section. Okay, a little bit of a pull there. Let's go harder again. I have to say, even with a fairly hard ratio like that, it's still pretty uh, transparent. Let's set it back down to 3 here. Uh, let's set this so we're getting maybe minus 1 dB again is fine for this track. You gotta let it out, feel it, feel it. Well, that sounds pretty good. We'll leave it at that. Okay, onto the level section. Now watch here as I turn on the power. Keep an eye on the ASIO meter here. Because shooting up to what, 20, 28? That's a lot for one plug-in. But let's see what it does. Okay, first things first are the settings again. We'll click in here. Um, low end punch and detail link is just move one knob, the other one goes. Um, and the next then is just setting the range of your gain here. And we'll leave it to 1 to 20 for this. Onto the constant gain monitoring. Now, this is a godsend. This little button here, turn it on, and no matter how much gain you add, the output will always be the same. So at least by having this button here, you can start adding it gain and you'll be able to hear if you're doing anything that's destructive without having the the loud volume of what you're doing trick your ears into thinking yeah that sounds great and just to test it out now watch this okay we're up to minus four there rms which is ridiculously loud we'll never go anywhere near that but at least the the it is a constant uh, gain on the output um, while I've got it up there, you can hear the saturation kicking in, you can hear it's just, you know, sounds a little distorted, but as I'm saying, that's up to, uh, minus four RMS, which is way too loud. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at the, the low punch, the detail, and then we'll bring in the dynamic perception and then the, the ITP here, the intelligent transient preservation. Well, let's start with getting the volume or the RMS to around minus 10 or mi minus 9. Let's see if we can push it a little bit for for the purpose of this. Okay, 
Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just bypass this section, um, or I'll bypass the whole plugin for a second. So we've got the constant gain on, so we shouldn't really hear a difference in the volume, but you'll be able to hear exactly what the plugin is doing by adding, what is it, 8 dBs of gain there? So off. Okay, well there you go. It is pretty good. It's it is adding a little bit to the guitars as well. It's thickening up and making the whole thing sound a little bit bigger. Let's take a look at the low end punch. What I'll do is I'll increase it all the way to ten and then back down again, so you can hear how much it starts to pull out the kick drum from our mix. pounding out of the speakers there. What I'll do is I'll bring it, I'll bring it back down and set it to uh, let's, let's have a listen and, and see if we can set it to the optimum level for this track. That sounds about right to me. That sounds absolutely fine. Now onto the snare, same sort of thing here. All I'll do is I'll bring it up from zero the whole way to ten, just so you can hear the effect, and then we'll um, we'll set it to the optimum level. So again, you can hear what it's doing. It's really helping that snare to to just pop out of your mix. It's doing a couple of other things in the mix as well, but um. The snare is probably the more obvious of them all. Let's just set it then to where we want it for this uh, track. Sounds good to me. Moving on to dynamic perception. Again, same sort of drill here. I'll go from 0 to 10 so you can hear the effect um, and let your ears tell you what it's doing. I'm sure you can hear what's happening there, but it's bringing out the guitars, it's taking up the whole track. Um, I think 10 is too much there, but um, it doesn't sound too bad. Uh, you notice the RMS is, is coming up as well, obviously, because that's what it is, it's dynamic perception. So we'll bring it back, I set it around to minus uh, 5 is where it sounded good, so we'll, we'll just see if we can add a little bit to it and see if we can widen those guitars. <laughs> Okay, well, sounded good to me. I think we can stick with that. Now, the last part, which is the intelligent transient preservation. So, again, all what I'll do is I'll bring it from smooth to hard and you can hear what it's doing. Okay, well, I think you can hear what it's doing there. It's essentially inflating the sound. It makes it sound bigger. Guitars are now wider. Um, it's getting the, um, the, the transients here popping out a little bit more as well. That's well, probably not, actually. Okay, well, I, I think you can hear what's happening there. It... Okay, I'm sure you can hear what's happening there. But uh, essentially, it's bringing out our guitars. It's it's just thickening up the whole track and making it sound fat. And, and... No, it's not making it sound fat. It's... I'm sure you can hear what's happening there, but it's bringing out the guitars, it's taking up the whole track. Um, I think 10 is too much there, but um, it doesn't sound too bad. Uh, you notice the RMS is, is coming up as well, obviously, because that's what it is, it's dynamic perception. So we'll bring it back, I set it around to minus uh, 5 is where it sounded good, so we'll, we'll just see if we can add a little bit to it and see if we can widen those guitars. <laughs>
9.2 doesn't sound like it's been limited. The snare is still coming out at you. The kick is still coming out at you. Guitars sound great. Vocal sounds where it should be. It sounds amazing. And, and I just want to, to mention that there's only one plugin working here, bar this, which is after this, just for the monitoring. So we've got one plugin. Um, um, this track was mixed. I stuck a, a compressor on it just to kind of glue it. And that was it. Done. One plugin. And now we've got a master that's sounding loud, it's sounding punchy, and sounding um, pretty much intact. So what I'll do is, just for the rest of this, I'm going to um, run through. There's a little bit of a, a, a fun um, breakdown section here, which is quiet, and then it builds up to a louder section. So just have a listen to see how, how much the dynamics were, were uh, preserved, um, and just see what you think. Here you go. Well, thanks very much for watching, and keep an eye out here. There'll be plenty more reviews to come. Take care.